Witnessing a rocket launch in person, it can actually emotionally change you a little bit. Not only seeing, but feeling. I can tell you that the launch is going to be far more intense as far as volume than a sonic boom that reaches us back on the ground. I mean, that's happening far away. It's, you know, inverse square law of it coming out. It's going to be less to us on the ground than 33 Raptor engines. The countdown for Starship's orbital launch has started. You actually feel this launch, and uh, that is, is something very special to experience in person. The, the show is about to start. Elon Musk publicly stated we could see Starship fly as soon as July. And if you plan to see it in person, you've probably already pondered how loud it will actually be. We can assume it'll be at least Saturn V noise level and definitely louder than shuttle. We have ignition. All engines are running. We have liftoff. We have liftoff at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The tower has... My God, our building's shaking here. Our building's shaking. In fact, there's a whole section about noise in the FAA's environmental review. It states noise, including engine noise and sonic booms from individual launch, including landing events and static fire engine tests, is expected to be heard by people in the surrounding communities, including Brownsville, Laguna Vista, Port Isabel, South Padre Island, and parts of Mexico. These individual noise events are not expected to cause general annoyance or pose health concerns due to the sound levels and expected frequency of events, though noise complaints may occur. The FAA would ensure that SpaceX uses its notification plan to educate the public and announce when a launch or landing event would occur. So this plan would involve SpaceX having to issue statements to news outlets and law enforcement so that when the noise is heard, the public would understand what the heck is going on. The FAA also is requiring SpaceX to carry insurance in the amount of maximum probable loss, which is determined on a launch by launch basis. And in the event that structural damage results from noise induced vibrations or sonic booms, any such claims of damage would be subject to the insurance policy terms. And with so many independent media groups down at Starbase awaiting the big day, many are preparing to capture one of the biggest milestones for humanity. Andrew Keating is one of those dedicated to capturing the launch, uprooting his life to live on the southern tip of Texas. Enlightening. <laughs> A little different from San Francisco. Yeah, no, it's that I, I, I love it here. But living and working in the new space frontier has its challenges. It's a good analog for reminding yourself of what colonizing the moon or Mars would be like. It's like, it's gonna be way worse than this. <laughs> so, mosquitoes here and the heat and humidity, like, you know, that's... Yeah, child's play. Yeah, so. Andrew got the attention of Cosmic Perspective and started working with them in November. I just want to be a part of that, and I felt like I could help, and it was a time to make a transition in my life, so um, instead of just emailing and talking about it, I figured I'd just come here. I've been here since October, and it is now June. He plans to assist everyday astronaut and Cosmic Perspective for the big day. We help Tim with the live broadcast. Hopefully the broadcast audio will be able to have uh, my mics for that up close. Hopefully it won't have that delay where it's like you see it and everyone goes nuts, but you're not hearing it. Tim will probably be screaming. Tim and Mary Liz will be screaming over it anyway. So, you know, I don't know if people will be listening. Woo! This is actually more for the, um, the stuff in post, hmm. you know, and, and putting out a, a video like what, you know, Cosmic Perspective is best at, I think, is the good cinematic approach to things and releasing a video later. So this will be particularly good with that. Also with the VR, because this will be able to capture, well, an ambisonic array that I had to, I luckily had time to custom make. Having done sound work his entire life. Yeah, I started out and I've always been doing audio since I was a kid. And I started doing music production for about 10 years professionally. And I did live sound in between there and all sorts of other miscellaneous projects. and lighting and video and everything. And then I kind of went more corporate. We all got the ax at the same time. They closed down the studio. They stopped wanting to pay San Francisco salaries. Came here and um, you know, wanted to try to get the attention of these independent media groups. I thought what they were doing was really, really cool. And to see especially uh, Tim's operation and Cosmic Perspectives 
and that grassroots kind of at times fly by the seat of your pants trying to get get the job done and up in the middle of the night still making SDI cables, coax cables. This will be the hardest challenge yet. There's no dress rehearsal. There's no sound check. You gotta, you gotta constantly run every scenario through your head of what could happen and imagining what it's gonna be like to be out there because frankly, you'll never actually be out there. And he doesn't wanna mess it up. If the sound goes right, no one cares. They just think it's a fantastic video. If the sound is bad, then everyone just shits all over you, so. Video's not good if the sound is bad. Well, people's recorders get blown out. The microphones get blown out. Um, I'm trying to solve for both. The recorder I have and, and the way I'm recording it is, is gonna be better for higher dynamics and, and louder sounds for sure. If you're a fan of Ellie in space, it's probably safe to assume you're a fan of Starship and Falcon Heavy and rockets in general. But why don't you dig deeper and try out this course on Brilliant about classical mechanics. This is some hardcore training for the aspiring physicist. Now in this course, some topics covered are kinetic energy, potential energy, Newton's laws, oscillations, and of course, the rocket equation. You'll establish the bedrock principles of physics and use them to reveal matter in motion from drones and rockets to skyscrapers and blinking fireflies. If you haven't tried out Brilliant yet, take this as your sign. I know some people who have learned so much and said that they wish that this is the way that they were taught these subjects in school. And part of that is because these lessons are interactive. In fact, that's the best way to learn anything by doing it interactively. You learn six times better than just listening to someone speak to you. There are also over 60 courses to choose from on Brilliant, so pick whatever suits your fancy. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for you. Head to brilliant.org slash Ellie in space to get started for free with these interactive lessons. And the first 200 listeners will also get a 20% off an annual membership. Andrew has two components he's been working on. Uh, this is a all-weather case I made for the audio recorder to go out in the field for capturing any rocket launch for that matter, but in this case, Starship. In this case, here's the case. <laughs> in this case, here's the case, yeah. Um, this was a case study. I did a case study for cases also. This has not been in front of a launch yet, or even a static fire. So this is good timing because I just finished this and we're looking forward to static fire soon, mm -hmm. hopefully. Mm. What's in the box? What's, What's in the box? This box. Yeah. Uh, this is just the audio recorder, battery, Temperature, humidity, logger, sensor. What do you have to have in mind to keep that safe? RUDs, well, rapid, unscheduled disassembly. If anything like that happens, we want it, um, obviously all the equipment. Mics, there's not much you can do about that, but at least this recorder, this, for me, expensive recorder, um, uh, want to protect that and protect the media too. So like, even if we recover this, we can, all the mics could, could have gone to shit, but at least, at least we got it. <laughs> there's a huge desiccant bag underneath this to absorb all the moisture, but it should be rainproof and sunproof. Proof is really the wrong word to use. Thousands of gallons of water flood the launch area at the crucial moment surrounding ignition, serving two purposes. Water keeps flames from spreading and prevents damage caused by sound waves. Sound waves can cause pipes to burst, walls to crack, and joints to loosen. These damaged systems could lead to more fires because of those leaks and breaks. Water floods the launch area to muffle the sound energy. The sound suppression system protects the orbiter and its payloads from being damaged by muffling acoustical energy, sound waves, that could crack and damage surfaces during liftoff. Water stored in a 300,000 gallon elevated tank is released just prior to main engine ignition and flows to the launch platform outlets. I'm not worried about um, soot and things like that and coking kind of just, or nasty chemicals coming out, of, coming out of a launch and covering everything. But he is worried about the heat. Uh, well, I'm trying to do anything I can to mitigate heat. I have another little shade that's gonna go over this. It's just harsh elements. I mean, similar to Florida. I mean, right. it's kind of an inverse relationship. The better it is for orbital launches, well, for near equatorial orbital launches, uh, you wanna get closer to the equator. So how close will the box be? 300 meters-ish, maybe. Yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot yeah. uh, and, and doing all the research I can and, and watching all the videos and everything, all the papers that have been written about it. Actually, in particular, this one group, the, the Pascal group, um, I'm going to help them with some logistics down here. A group of 
undergrads, grads, and, and professors at uh, BYU. They document a lot of rocket launches and they're just chomping at the bit to document this. And the second part of his system is this. Now I moved it to here in the studio slash shed of the carport of Rocket Ranch. Behold. So this is what I call the Tetra mount. It is an ambisonic microphone array. And I had to 3D print this guy because this doesn't really exist yet. Also, if you're not already following Cosmic Perspective, you'll wanna do that right now. I'm sure many of you are, but if you haven't already, go check out their website, cosmicperspective.com. They have plenty of upcoming audio clips, cinematic video pieces, and of course, VR footage of launches on the way. Their work is phenomenal, and they do a great job of sharing the road to Mars through film, photography, and this immersive experience that we're talking about with the VR. So go ahead, check them out, give them a follow, give them a like, and let's get back into the video. I had never dabbled in VR and the ambisonics, the audio part of VR. Um, well, ambisonics can be used for anything, but it's particularly helpful for VR because you got that 360 mm -hmm. um, spherical soundscape around you that that captures. So you got microphones pointed in every direction. And incidentally, it's a tetrahedral pattern which is what uh, is required for first order ambisonic audio capturing. So far, the mics have worked pretty well during tests in Florida. With my mic choice of what I think is gonna work the best and actually, frankly, has been proven, we made a, I made a, a, a mic kit for our cape photographer, John Pisani. That was just a stereo pair. It, it's been great. We've gotten uh, three launches so far and some sonic booms, some uh, return to launch site. Uh, yeah, and it sounds great. It, they're, the problem now is not the mics. The problem has always been the mics with other people putting recorders out um, in front of, especially close up to rocket launches. Uh, they just can't handle that kind of volume. Uh, they peek out. I mean, there's a, there is that snap of the rocket launch. But now he needs to put his box and his 3D printed mount to the test. He'll be able to do a run through during a static fire. So actually, before I said there was, uh, you know, no sound check. Static fires are a good sound check, actually. If you plan to attend the launch, you should probably start planning sooner than later because we all want to be there and I'm pretty sure spots will fill up quick. Mm -hmm. 